We are here at this right now to talk with Oscar Rene Lazoya. Am I saying it right? Correct, yeah. And he is going to talk to us about the things he's learned as a TV director. So Oscar's went from indie filmmaker to TV director, something so many of us, including myself, are on a path. It's our goal to do. And I am going to grill him. And Oscar, <laughs> uh, thank you for joining us. Tell us the You've directed two TV shows or three? I can't remember. I've directed three different television shows. Three TV shows. Which yeah. TV shows have you directed? Uh, the first uh, two were Law and Arrest for You. And then I did a Chicago Fire followed by an FBI on TBS. That's awesome. You did SVU twice? I did two SVUs, yeah. So, so three different shows with four episodes all together. So did the two shows you did, where did you go and then they asked you back? Or did you get it? That's correct, That's yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So I did the first episode in February of 2022. And the following year, they asked if I wanted to do another one in September of uh, the same year, actually. So. See, he knows what he's doing. <laughs> also, you did procedurals, which I, when I watch procedural, I just feel like, you know, there's a lot of shows I would love to direct. And then there's shows where I'm like, I don't know if I want to take that on. Do you think the procedural was a big scary beast when you went to go do it? Or was it? Were you excited? Like, how does that feel? Yeah, so I'm very fortunate where I worked on the show as an editor on Law and Rest for You prior to directing. So I knew kind of the formula. I knew what the producers liked and didn't like. As far as, you know, working specific on procedurals, I enjoy them because it's really interesting where you have to follow, you know, I'll use that word again, formula that they normally use, but they also want you to put your own spin and make it a little bit different and kind of keep the audience engaged. And so that's the challenging part is the best way I could describe it that someone told me is it's almost like you're going to somebody's house, making them a meal but in their kitchen with their food, but you also want to make it good. So you were editing, but before, you're also, I mean, you're a filmmaker. You'll go out, you've made any movies, you've done, have you done features yet? I've done features. You've done features, oh, yeah, I thought. Yeah. I know you've done shorts. So you've gone up and you've done that. And then you went and did these big TV shows. Can you tell us what was one of the, I'll say the hardest things to go from indie to TV or the trickiest things that comes to mind? I think, and this is, you know, when I've spoken to other television directors that have come from that indie world, this is something similar that they say is, you know, in the indie world, you're kind of wearing a lot of different hats. And so you have everything you want in your head, essentially. And sometimes you don't have to communicate that with anyone because you're the one that's going to do any bash. In the TV world, everyone has their own, or there's a head of a department for pretty much everything. There's a head of wardrobe, head of America, head of makeup. And so you're not wearing as many hats. And so it's super important that you just communicate with these people on every single thing that you're looking for in order to achieve your vision. And so I think that's something that you really kind of have to sometimes let go of. Even if you're working for a deep with a DP, for instance, maybe you want a specific shot, but then the DP has an idea. That DP works on the show, you know, 22 episodes out of the year, and you're just there for one or maybe two. So, you know, it's it's your job to trust that DP and to filter out those good ideas and those not so good ideas. And so I think that's one thing that is, was very helpful is just being able to kind of let go of some of the control. Versus in the indie world, you have so much more control, which, you know, isn't actually a good or a bad thing, but it's just different. Where's that balance, that relationship of like, you don't really like that what they're doing, you think it's wrong, but you don't want to do it like, or, okay, that's fine, I'll do it. You know, like, how do you find that balance? How do you know which shot you should go along with? Is it kind of just an instinct thing when you're on set? I think every show is a little bit different. And then also every DP is a little bit different. So it's kind of hard. That's also something about TV that you just have to kind of learn how to navigate all these personalities. On one show, for instance, I had worked with a DP before. And so it was very much where if I wanted a shot, you know, no questions asked, we would figure out how to get it done. Whereas another show that was a little bit more stunt heavy, if there was a shot that he thought maybe we could get rid of or something, you know, he was a little bit more open about that. And so I think for me, finding the balance is, you know, just really the biggest thing would be just being a director in general is just being having really good communication skills. If there's a shot you want, you have to tell them why you want it. Yeah. And if they still don't agree, they then that's their job too, is to tell you why they don't agree. And then either figuring out, I don't like to say compromise, but figuring out a middle ground in a sense in order to get still your vision, what you're trying to achieve in that specific episode. And this goes back to just something in elementary. I really believe in the golden rule. I know you're saying, you know, it's it's tough coming in as a newcomer, even though you've been directing longer than some of these people. I still, you know, me, my motto is you still have to be respectful no matter what. And some people just aren't nice people. And if they're not nice, you have to kind of be above that. And I yeah. think just step over, but still treat people respectfully if you don't want to be. True. We talk about like coming from indie world to the TV world. One of the things I've heard mm -hmm from showrunners that has been a problem for them with indie filmmakers is not that we don't know how to get it on time, not that we don't know how to call the shots to do our job, 
is that we don't spend enough money. We don't know what to ask for. We don't even think, oh, I should ask for this jib or I could ask for a helicopter or whatever. Yeah. Can you talk to us about your experience and like knowing what to ask for? Absolutely. Well, and that's the thing too. Every show is a little bit different. So literally, I always, whenever I start a new show, I ask them, do you guys have training days already in the budget? Do you guys have this already in the budget? And I think just having that communication with the line producer and then telling you up front, you know, kind of a general idea of what they normally do. Like on Chicago Fire, for instance, on my episode, I had two crane days. And the interesting thing was one of my big stunts was inside. So I asked them, I'm like, hey, can I actually use a crane indoors even? And they were like, yeah, you have it. You have a crane day. Let's do it. So, you know, that was something that was a little bit different that from my understanding not a lot of people had ever done before was actually use a crane for an indoor incident but i thought it would be cool and just give it a little bit of like we said or paris said you know, a little bit of extra spice yeah. on it but you know there was another show that i did where you know i wanted they don't normally do cranes it was more of a you know on your feet type of show they don't normally do cranes and it was between a crane that i asked for or a bigger building and you know that's when you have to honestly balance out those two things the bigger building i looked at the pages and it was only half of a page so i said this is you know the crayon shot that i want it would have been in the opening that's way more yeah than it's half a page that goes by so quick so i weighed out the pros and cons and i went with the crane on the first day of shooting and so i think you know that's kind of the for me anyway that's what i try and do is i just right away talk to the operation and say what do you guys normally do? And I think it's always better to ask for more. And they'll tell you, no, that's something one of my mentors, Cobert, so Marva told me as well. It's always better to ask for it. And then they'll take it away. I shouldn't say take it away. They might ask to trade off something if, if it doesn't work for their budget. So and actually, too, just to jump on besides just equipment, not asking for enough stuff. Even if it's something simple like VFX, too, like one show, they always try to go practical versus another show goes green screen. So that's why in all the meetings, you know, normally when you start prep, you have a concept meeting and you have all these various production. And so it's always good to ask them, how do you guys normally do it? If we wanted to do it this way, would that be OK? And the reason I say that is because, you know, you in your head might be thinking, oh, we're going to shoot this practically. And if you don't ask that question, how do you guys normally do it when you show up on set and there's nothing but green screen? Or when you show up on the first day of your VFX meeting and there's nothing but green screens, you're going to be in for a little yeah. bit of shock. So it just helps you, you know, prep. And in the long run, if you just ask those questions up front right away. How do you feel your editing helped you move into the, into the show or into directing in general? So, and just so you know, a little bit of my backstory. So I started off in news as a photographer editor. And then I worked for the NBA, the semi-pro basketball team, the Baker Soul Jam. And there I was an actual broadcast director. We don't have them much anymore, but it was the TriCaster. So we'd stream live and I'd say, you know, camera one, camera two, do that stuff. So I kind of went from editing to directing and then back to editing. And then I would direct movies or shorts, what have you, on my hiatus. So I was always kind of in the directing world, even when I was editing. But I think what helped me the most, truthfully, there's a couple of things. Being able to just talk to directors, it's an awesome training ground because as an editor, you get all the footage. And if something doesn't make sense or it was really good, you have the opportunity because they're in the room with you editing to ask him, why did you do this? And they could, you know, they have a million different reasons. They could say, oh, the production was running late. So I had to combine four shots with one. So that's why I just did a wonder for this whole scene, you know, and this is the way these angles are the way I thought that it would tell the story or convey the story better. And I'm actually glad we ran out of time because I would have never thought of doing this wonder and we did it. So, you know, things like that, I think just those small little experiences that you can learn from, from working with all these directors. I think that's, that was awesome being an editor. I also think, you know, just like you said, just knowing the show, you know, you kind of get in, in a rhythm as you know how much the shoot, the, the show shoots, if they go one camera, if they go two camera. As an example, like on Chicago Fire, if they're doing a big stunt day, they're more than likely going to shoot the three cameras. So that's something that you kind of have embedded in your mind as far as for rhythm and just production. And it just helps you learn kind of the style of the way they shoot. And another thing too, is you learn all the rules of the show. So you know what not to do on um, pretty much all the Dick Wolf shows. You never really want to break POV meeting. You never want to know information before our cops or our firefighters or our, our guys do. So for instance, if you see a drug deal on another room and the cops aren't there, you know that you can't actually shoot it inside of the room. You have to be looking outside of the room from the detective's point of view. There's a lot of things like that as an editor that I'm very thankful that I learned. Yeah. From. And then, like you said, too, just being able to know when that you, if you're running late or you're trying to be a little bit more efficient on one scene so you can have more time on another, you know what's the bare minimum that you need to still tell the story well. And if something happens and you start dropping shots, what do I need in this scene that's still going to convey the story? 
So let's talk about doing that indie film where one usually you have one guy yeah. doing everything versus what are we getting when we're on your shoot? Are you involved in those rehearsals? How many stunts to people? Anything you can think of to share about stunts? Yeah, and I think every show is a little bit different. On my first show, as an example, when I did a Law and Order Rescue, my, excuse me, my cold open was pretty big where I had a girl getting burned alive in the cold open. And then later on in the scene, I had another girl getting hit by a car. It was a very violent episode for some reason, but you know, they're not a big stunt show. And so when I had the meeting with the stunt coordinators, this is the game plan that I told them. I said, you know, I'm thinking A, B, C, D. And they said, well, I was thinking EFG. And I said, well, if we do A, B, C, D, then, th you know, this is the result. And I'm thinking about it like this. This is my ultimate goal. And I think we, it'll be more efficient if we shoot it this way. And so the stunt coordinator and I said, OK, let's do it that way. So on that show, because they're not stunt heavy, I think the director has a little bit more input on how to shoot those stunts. Whereas on Chicago Fire, they've been doing that already for, you know, over six seasons. And so they have a rhythm. They have an amazing, amazing stunt team that even if I wanted to input I, or give input, I still wouldn't be able to come up with an idea as good as their right. stunt team because they just have it down to a the science. They're amazing. On FBI, they have a stunt coordinator who's incredible. And that stunt or that uh, the, the stunts on that show are a little bit different. They don't what, on my episode, we didn't really rehearse them. I just kind of went with the stunt coordinator on during the tech scout and I told him what I was thinking. And then from there, we kind of worked on it on the day versus other shows. I, I don't know if I've told you about this, but I recently got accepted to the Paramount directing program. Congrats. So Yeah, thank you. So I was able to shadow on NCIS and for their stunts, they actually had a whole day of rehearsal, which was awesome because I've never experienced that before where the two actors actually came in with the stunt guys. They rehearsed the whole scene and the director was able to give input based off what the stunt coordinator had actually choreographed. And so that's the thing is every show is a little bit different. And that's kind of why, too, it's always good to just ask, how do you guys do these stunts? Do you primarily choreograph everything? And then I come in and give notes. Do you want me to choreograph everything? And it's always good just to kind of get a, a little bit of a heads up. And you could ask that to your line producer. And a lot of times, too, all these shows will have directing producers or even the ADs. The ADs are incredible. Every day that I've had on every show, I've been really blessed because they've been awesome. So they're also a good resource of just ask, how do you do it on this? Can you talk to us about what a collaboration feels like when you're like, you, you see this whole stunt being done. What was something you asked to change it? Do you remember? I... Or did you just go, this is great? <laughs> <laughs> No, no, no. The FBI show, for example, the one, you know, we had some, you know, when you read a script, it's always different in everyone's mind. The way I read it is going to be different from the way you right. picture it in your head. And so I was very fortunate. Like I said, it's all just about collaboration. When we were tech scouting, I spoke to the stunt coordinator on how I had it in my head, how they would actually be laying down on the ground in every direction. And then it's just a back and forth. I would say, I want them this way in this direction. The gun will be over here. Then the stunt coordinator would say, oh, that's that's amazing. What if we had this, the gun over here instead just to make it more accessible? And when he does this turn, it's a little bit smoother. And so I think that's where as a director, you have to say, you know, is this actually right or wrong? And he's amazing. And, and you know, when he told me this, I was like, yeah, that's that's awesome. Yeah, let's do that. So I've been very fortunate where all the stunt coordinators I've worked with have been very collaborative. And everything that I've brought up or mentioned in regards to changing, they've been all about it and, and trying to still meet somewhere in the middle where we're both happy. So it helped that you had this editing experience, a little bit of experience of your show. But when you go to a new show, maybe you don't know the show, maybe it was your first show. What comes to mind for you that you're like, I wish I had known this or thank God someone told me this? Is there some sort of advice you can impart to filmmakers for their, when they're going to do their first TV show as a director? Yeah. I think one of the things that's helped me out the most is just having mentors. It's always good to just bounce ideas off of somebody. I have another, I mentioned Roberto. And even when I wasn't working on Law & Order SVU, I would still call him sometimes and ask him like, hey, I have this situation. I'm thinking this. What do you think? You know, and I like, and just kind of getting a sounding board. And that's always very, very helpful just because you have so many things going on when you're a director. It's, it's kind of crazy. Like you get asked probably one question at least every 30 seconds. People always coming up to you asking you the craziest things that you would never even think. Like, do you want purple or do you want more lavender? Do you want, you know, <laughs> so, things like that. That's one thing I will say is it's if you have an opportunity to get somebody that you really trust and that you like another 
mentor is Mike Smith. And so when he did an, or when I was doing my first episode of SVU, I asked him specifically because he had done so many in the past. He gave me a lot of really good advice. The other thing I would say too, is it's always good. This is what I try to do is, you know, normally when you prep, your days aren't very long. Normally you'll prep till about four or five in the afternoon, and then you get to go home and, and prep from home and work on the following days. What I like to do is at least the first couple of days is I'll try and actually go to set and I'll try and meet the cast and the crew just so it's not such a cold introduction yeah. when you show up on day one of shooting. So that's a really big piece of advice that I got from somebody and it's it's always been very, very helpful for me. Um, Oscar, I'm so grateful for your time if you stop it by here at NAB's show. Thanks for listening to the Working Director Podcast. If you like what you're hearing, please rate and review as it helps others find the show and helps us keep making great content for you. And if you want even more help with your directing career, check out theworkingdirector.pro where you can apply to be part of the accelerator that hones in on where you currently are and helps you get to where you want to be. Whether it's this podcast, the accelerator, or our free Facebook community for directors, we're here to help you get to work.